Good afternoon, Madam Chair and Senators. My name is Paul Harris, and I stand in support of this bill. I'm a Maricopa resident. I live in Peoria. I have 25 plus years in corporate executive management for national companies and brands and organizational process and efficiency processes. So because of my background, I was actually asked to be a manager at the audit for the second session where I managed multiple tables and trained the incoming table managers. When the tallying portion was done, I was trained and then became the lead trainer for the incoming volunteers for the photographic forensic portion of the audit and was the floor manager for the last few weeks of quality control. I was there when the last pallet at the auditorium left. My name is on the chain of custody forms of hundreds of thousands of ballots. So because of the accuracy and efficiency of my teams, we were tasked with tallying of the damage ballots, large print ballots, braille ballots, and the special ballots set aside by the Senate. I specifically had the Senate liaison, the Secretary of State's observers, and John Branke at my tables every day, multiple times a day. But specifically, I was tasked with doing the UACABA ballots. A UACABA ballot is the Uniform Overseas Civilian Absentee Voting Act ballot. That ballot is sent out to our men and women who work overseas and for our federal people that work overseas to get a chance to vote in the election. Seconds. This is what a ballot looks like that goes out to everybody, right? 11 and a half by 19 ballot. When I opened up the boxes of ballots, this is what a ballot looks like that's a UACABA ballot. You know what that is? That's an eight and a half by 11 white sheet of copy paper. Did you all know that our ballots come back like this from our overseas people? Did any of you know this? It was such a sham that I had people every day at my tables counting the picture, taking pictures of these ballots that were scanned down. The ballots are scanned. It took my teams three complete days to count all of the UACABA ballots. You know why? Because in 2016, the numbers were apparently there were 1,600 UACABA ballots that came back in the most significant election of our lifetime. In 2020, the numbers were close to 9,600 ballots that came back. And I will tell you as an eyewitness, as an eyewitness, 95% because I was asked to tally these personally by the Senate liaisons, all went towards one candidate. And in a state where this, that candidate won by a little over 10,000 votes, that is a net gain of 8,000 new votes during an election when people were brought home because there was a pandemic. And because our federal people, our, 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 our military right. people were brought home. I'll take any questions. My daughter voted via email. Mm -hmm. She's in Maryland and voted via email. Is that what you're talking about? They printed out the emails or what are we talking about? It was about? a printed out email. And I can tell you that when I opened the boxes, the shock of people that saw these boxes opened up with me was so, it, it literally shocked all of us because these pieces of paper were just stacked, laid on top of one another, wrapped around the edge. There was no form or reason to them. There was no process to them. There was no ballot attached to where this ballot came from. It's just a ballot that's been scanned on a piece of paper. Well, shoot, I guess I could have just printed off thousands of ballots and figured out a way to get them somewhere because I want to know how. I want to know how as a business person and as a voter how thousands of ballots are just scanned and who counts these? Who tallies these? Because with my teams that it took us literally, my teams could do about 3,000 ballots in it per, per setting of, of actual ballots going around the tables, right? My teams could do those. It took my teams three days. Each, t each table three days, two sessions each every day to count these because we, had to look, we couldn't touch them. So we had to actually try to look at them because the ballot is scanned down onto this. Can I ask you a question on yes, that? Yes, ma'am. Was it a printed email with the name of the person? No. It, was it a There's filled no out? It, did somebody fill out a ballot for the person who emailed? We, we have no idea. All I know is that it was an emailed ballot that comes out like this and there's no chain of custody. There's no identifying numbers on the ballot. There's nothing to identify where this piece of paper came from. And I will say this, if people want to ask where to find out where this stuff is, it's really easy because every one of those boxes that are under chain of custody have my name on them sitting somewhere here. And I like to find out where those are. And then here's my next question. What happened in Pinal? What happened in Yuma? 
What happened in Yavapai? What happened in all the other counties when we had an 8,000 net gain of ballots this election year? Do we even know how many federal employees we have outside of Maricopa County that vote absentee? Do we have that number? I know, Sonny, I've asked you to look. I've got, I know you've looked. We don't have that number. As a matter of fact, we've at the audit, at the audit, have done a, a request of information from the federal government on how many actual UACAVA ballots were out or expected to come back federally. And I will tell you that the last number we heard that Maricopa County, not Arizona, made up for more than 20% of the nation's UACAVA ballots. Can somebody explain that one to me? Is, is Jen Larson still here? Jen, would you, be, would you yield to Jen for a minute and see if she can explain to us the process of uh, how do we know about UACAVA and then who transfers those emails onto a ballot uh, and uh, what, tell us, educate us on this. Madam Chair, I will try. So, okay, with a UOCAVA voter, you've got to remember that they can't always return their ballot the way that we return ballots when we live here, right? right? So we allow for them to return ballots via fax, for example. That fax comes into a secure portal at the Secretary of State's office. The Secretary of State's office contacts the county where that UOCAVA voter is casting their ballot and says we have a secure form from a UOCAVA voter we're going to send it to you yeah it probably does get printed out on regular paper because Not probably. It, yeah it, it does guys a hundred percent it does Let's because have dialogue back and forth that's like that. how it, the system works so then what happens is that a board of two people of opposing parties look at that transmission that came in from that voter and they have to transfer those votes onto a piece of paper that can be tabulated through our tabulation equipment. Okay, let me stop you there. Yes. The board of two people. Who verifies the parties of the people who are there in that board? Who verifies that that person is a Republican and that person is a Democrat? Madam Chair, someone's going to text me if I'm wrong. It's the county. They, they, the, those people come in, and either they're temporary workers from the county, they're full-time employees of the county, and the county checks their voter registration records to make sure that they have opposing party people doing and, this work. And who selects them? The party or the county? Who selects them? Madam Chair, I, I don't know the answer to that. I think it's the county, but let me find out who selects them, okay? Because of course we want confidence in who those folks are, Okay. right? Yep. So we want to know who's choosing them and who's verifying their party status and whatnot. Absolutely. So like and Madam Chair, I understand and I, I know you're, I can tell the gentleman next to me is very frustrated and passionate and concerned and I appreciate all of that, but that is not an example of the system not working. That is actually an example of the system working the way the legislature lined it up. It was Mr. Payton's bill years okay. ago so what when we gonna, allowed for that. What I'd like to do is let's learn a little bit more about stuff that we, you know, behind the scenes that we don't know that okay. we can add to policy to change that and tighten it up. Okay. Okay, good. Was there anything else, sir, that you wanted to add? Yes, sir. Thank you, Jen. Yes, sir. Yes, um, Madam Chair, and I don't know who to address this to, maybe Ms. Uh, Morrison uh, or not, but, uh, but Mr. Harris, how do you know that that's the what you you that piece of paper you saw was an original and not a copy of a copy but of a copy? There, there's no way to know that is the is the point. And and again, we were more shocked by the volume of of ballots that it, that it wasn't again. So if it took two people, let me just say it took two people. It took a team of five in eight hour sessions basically to tabulate to tally all those ballots, ballots that came through. I mean, so two people doing it, that's impressive. Love to know, know how long it took them to do it, to get, the, to get the vote in time for us to call the race in Arizona. Just saying, because it took my team of five, six including me, to tally those ballots, just the Uacavas. Okay. So we're, we're Madam Chair, I mean, this is... Madam Chair, this is what, this is what uh, I'm, I'm having a difficult time with. We don't have that many guardsmen deployed. We don't have that many. I mean, that was, we're talking about the winding down of Afghanistan and almost a skeleton crew in Iraq of, of, of active duty deployed. When I was in the Marines, I voted absentee. I, I actually had a ballot. I never heard of this 
vote by email. Well, you got a ballot, uh, but you sent it in somehow. Yeah, and of course, I'm convinced none of my absentee ballots ever made it in because I don't trust the postman. Okay, anyway, but um, especially if you're on ship, there's no, there really is no mail buoy out there. That everybody just anyway. Um, but I'm having a hard time grasping this nine, what, 9,800? 9,600 plus, yes. Close to 10,000. And what, in 2016, we had what? It's a little over 1,600. 1,600. Which and we, we don't might have make more many, sense. Our entire guard is not even that many people. And we don't have anybody deployed. This is, yeah. Okay. Wow. These are these are things that really need to be looked at. And then once again, we don't have no way of knowing that that piece of paper that you pulled out of the boxes was a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. So really, realistically, the chain of custody on that is kind of like out the door. Correct. Okay, thank you. I will say, if I may speak to the other, you know, when yes, I when I can. opened the other boxes that were actual ballots, chain of custody was there. I mean, I did see chain of custody. We did on the on the label of the box and all the. This label just was written Uacava. We opened them up. There's not, there weren't batch sheets in between all of them like we saw with the other ballots that we would see. There weren't all those, there weren't the, the again, which is why I had the Secretary of State's observers and Ken, Sec, uh, Ken Bennett and John Branke at my tables both times while all these were being counted, while photos were being taken, not just from all the cameras that were overly redundant during the audit from on the table, which saw everything and the above, but the actual took pictures of these because we needed to show how this, how is this possible that in 2020, we were sending in ballots on hammer mill or whatever it is, eight and a half by 11 white copy paper. So just to dial us closer back into the bill, um, one of the reasons they're UOCAVA is and they can't get one of these to send back. Correct. So we're going to have to solve that issue. We're going to have to look at that. Um, West Virginia has a unique way of doing it, but we're going to talk about it here because it's not on the agenda. Um, so this, we've got work to do, and uh, I appreciate your your testimony. Would love to sit down with you and, and talk more Absolutely. On, on this. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Madam Thank Chair. You. Yes. I just wanted to add that um, those um, Yubakaba um, ballots also include family members of our uh, military people that are also living abroad. Thank you. Thank you. And to that point, I think probably the, the number one goal, and I have said this in every elections committee hearing, is voter confidence. And when we have this kind of loosey-goosey kind of way, regardless of what side you're on, it, it stirs the imagination of the voter. So if there's a way that we can tighten it up, we're not trying to suppress anybody's vote. We just want to uh, increase the confidence that there wasn't a bunch of copies ran off. And, there's, you know, and so we all need to learn more about the process. And if we see things like this that we could tighten up, um, Easy to vote, hard to cheat, right? So that's the idea. So we, as we're going through this last um, season, two years now, we've learned quite a bit, and we're not here to try and take anyone's vote. We just want to increase the confidence of the voters so the voter will actually go to the polls and vote. Okay.